My name is Jason Webb. I uh, started homebrewing with my brother in 1991. And uh, my parents are from London, so my granddad homebrewed um, in his backyard for 40 years. They made sherry for Nana. So we went over there a couple times, tried his beer in his backyard, and inspired my brother and I to brew and homebrew. And we jumped straight into all grain, um, right in the garage, the Coleman cooler bit, 10 gallon batches. Um, got really into that for a couple years of homebrewing. Um, and then Saxer Brewing was in Lake Oswego. They opened in 93. And I went there just to get a, for a dock sales position. I, had no, I was just a homebrewer at the time. I had no idea that they were actually looking for a brewer. And I, I expected to go in just, you know, drive a forklift or something. But I gave uh, Tony Gomes his name. He's a German brewmaster. He got a five-year degree in Domens in Munich, Germany. He really liked my homebrew, and he decided himself to teach uh, a homebrewer how to become a professional brewer. So throughout his five-year course, a little bit every morning, he would teach me a little more than science and chemistry of brewing. He threw me straight into the brew house. 30-barrel, four-vessel decoction mash, mash brewery. Uh, we did all lagers, and we were open there. I was there from 93 to 2000. And it was actually Cliff's idea, my, my dad, Cliff to start a brew on premise. And we're like, hmm, that's, you know, there's been some failures on those, and, but how can we make it awesome? So we figured, let's make a full home and wine brew shop, full pub, eight beers on tap, a brew on premise, and a, a small brewery. So it's kind of four in one here. And it was, it was his idea. It took a few months to find the perfect building, and it took us almost two and a half years to build. And we've been open since June, so that's about a little over a year and a half, and it's going very well. We're the only homebrew shop I think we can walk around and shop and drink at the same time. And we went the extra mile for the customers on quality for the beer. We do all grain. First of all, we don't screw around extract. That's just boring brewing to me. It's good, makes good beer, but we wanted to make it from scratch, uh, which all grain. Uh, we do primary fermentation. We actually go transfer it down to secondary and we actually cold condition and carbonate, uh, so there's no filtration. So the beer comes right nice and bright and clear and smooth um, just from that process. If you have a small pilot system at a brewery, it's great because you can make small batches. That's what we have. We, we make half barrel batches. So say we make a, you know, a red vines or a something, you know, crazy, and it doesn't come out well. Well, we've never dumped the batch. Let's let's get that straight. But at least it's just a keg, and if we like it, we can you know tweak the recipe again and. I like making traditional style beers. I'm gonna start doing lagers again. I, I, I love making lagers. I think they need to come back. I did a bourbon barrel aged barley wine. Uh, that was just amazing. And that turned out just, I'm gonna brew more, because it's great. There's a lot of breweries in Portland, which I think what's happening is neighborhoods are hanging around their neighborhood breweries. You know, I think uh, all the little communities should have a little brew pub, especially if there's beer lovers. And maybe it'll convert those, you know, commercial beer drinkers, the, the light beers and all, to try a light golden ale at five and a half, eight percent, you know, that's not, doesn't have corn sugar and rice in it. But yeah, the community's great. Um, here, we, we love sharing all of our recipes. We don't hide anything. If I need a bag of um, caramel malt and I'm out and I could call one of my brewer brothers and say, hey, you want to, do you have an extra one for me? Go pick it up and have a pint, and then I'm safe for the day because I forgot to order it or something, you know, <laughs> or something yeah. happens. Yeah, we have all our regulars. We have people that brew on premise here, like they've done five, seven batches. We've had some people, you know, some breweries come to us and say, can we use your system for a pilot system because we don't have one. Yeah, we do that. It's always fun. Yeah, I mean, I, get, I work 60, 70 hours a week, obviously as a business owner, but a lot of brewers work a lot of hours, and it's a lot of, it's not just drinking beer and having fun. Yeah, I remember it was the se er, 70s and early 80s, a bunch of wineries popped up, all the Californians from Napa and everything said, oh, what grapes grow well in Oregon. The beer scene, everybody, you know, is popping up in neighborhood breweries, like we said earlier, and I think that's good. Uh, wineries, they're out in the country and they're typically distributing it, but all these new little brew pubs that are popping up for neighborhoods, I think that's a great idea. We have converted so many people into home brewing. I can't even count. I mean, yeah. People that, oh, I've always wanted a home, always wanted, and we help them out the whole, the whole way. You know, we take, our, we take time with them to help them out. I think home brewing is if you can cook, if you can boil water, you should make your own beer. <laughs> That's an awesome quote. <laughs>